All right, joining me now to discuss this and the other top stories of the day, Sky News host Liz Stora. Welcome, Liz. Hello, hello. And contributor Joe Hildebrand. Great to hello, see you. Hello, I love to see you. How are you? Um, Liz, look, I have to ask you about this story before we get on to some of the other topics. Uh, it's, it's astounding. I mean, it, if it wasn't admitted at Senate estimates, if you didn't just hear that official, and that's why I had to show the clip, mm. saying yes, possibly one hour, I mean, it would take weeks and weeks to work out and we don't have a presence on the ground in Gaza. No. Whether someone does have terrorist symp sympathies or, or participated in the terror attack itself. Sadly, I don't find it that shocking at all, Shari, given that our foreign minister has shown time and time again where she really stands with regard to this conflict. Uh, it doesn't skip anyone's mind that she doubled funding to ANWA before the terrorist attacks. Obviously, she's since withdrawn them due to the in incomprehensible pressure that was placed upon her. She's still got people, even on the front bench, asking her to reinstate that. I don't think for a minute that she's unaware of the risk that she's importing. David Adler's quite right in saying that 75% of Palestinians, there was a very comprehensive poll done, supported the October 7 massacres. Here in Western democracies, we do not have any kind of point of reference for life in Gaza and the kind of indoctrination that goes on there. When we talk about this tiny strip of land, we are talking about one of the most intensely indoctrinated parts in the known world. Mm. And so to think that they have somehow managed to find 2,273 people who have not been indoctrinated to support Hamas or celebrate what occurred on October 7, who aren't bringing their ideology with them, who are totally open to the Western way of life and just completely relieved and grateful to make it here is simply beyond belief. It mm. doesn't pass the pub test. And that's before we find out that this sad excuse for a security check is all they were vetted by. It's terrible. Joe. I mean, we, we've always traditionally mm. placed... You made people jump through hoops when they wanted to become an Australian <laughs> citizen and, and try to prove that they adhere to Australian values. I mean, what's it's, happened to that? That's gone out the window. Now we don't care if someone adheres yeah, to Australian it's... values or not. Why are we giving away our cohesive multicultural society? Look, it is obviously concerning and um, I, I would probably say... Firstly, it's amazing how quickly the bureaucracy can move when it wants to, isn't it? Um, oh, yeah. Anyone who's it's tried to get indeed. a new passport it certainly yes. takes more than an hour. Um, I would... I, my understanding, my... my, my I, I would assume that these visas that are granted uh, in an hour or in a day or whatever it may be, it's not that they're taking that amount of time to do the security checks. It's that the person already has enough material information, as the, 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 um, the official said, before them where they can say, oh, actually... He's ticked all these boxes. It's all fine. Bye bye. So they don't care if they're Hamas. They're just uh, doing identity. You need well, to okay, take the time to vet those it, docs. But though, as, as, I have, as, that as I have, as I have always said, um, it is naive to think that you can just have a war against Hamas and not have a war against the broader Palestinian population because through no fault of their own, they have been indoctrinated, they've been bombarded with propaganda, terrorists are treated as freedom fighters and martyrs, they're given financial incentives by way of compensation, yeah. so yeah. it's in a mother's interest to tell her son to go and blow himself up at a checkpoint. Um, so, of course, this does something to you, this screws you over enormously. So I think if you were going to say, well, we can't have any Palestinians come here who secretly, in the back of their mind, have any association with Hamas or have any sympathies for Hamas, then you might as well not have a sort of humanitarian program at all because every, almost every one of them is going to, at some point, have that But, but have, also, have that Liz, what, what about the Arab neighbouring countries and nations? Well, why aren't they well, taking some of the... Why because is it up to Australia know. half a world away? I, I believe this is because they know. They are familiar with life in Gaza. They are familiar with the indoctrination and they, too, are very territorial in terms of guarding the peace that they have in their own countries. There are no, tens and tens of other Arab countries surrounding them, other Muslim countries I, I, so, surrounding I, so, them. In which they it's ought to be far made like a, much like a mask, more at they home. Want to use, they want to use these people as human shields and use them as human fodder, so that inevitably, when Israel does um, kill civilians to get at Hamas, 
they can then jump up and down and say, look, this is what the horrible Israeli colonisers are doing. This is why we have to wipe them out. And I think that, that's part that is, and parcel that of it. Do. But the world is also looking at them going, yes, but you're right next door and you could have saved them. We know Hamas that's, is that, using them as human they, shields. Even, even the these Palestinians guys, in the these refugee, are far richer the, countries even, who have the means to take them in. Even the Palestinians in the refugee camps in um, Palestine don't want to leave them because they feel that that would forfeit their claim. So, again, mm. these are people who are using themselves or being used by, manipulated by Hamas, by other um, uh, Isla Isla Islamist extremist organisations to try to perpetuate this sort of historical victimhood so that they can't go back because they still have to say, see, I'm still stuck in this refugee camp, you know, three generations later because of what Israel did in yeah. 1948. Right. That is, that is the, the narrative there.